Now we will discuss the various concepts related to normality. So first of all, I should explain what do we mean by um, normality. Normality actually means if we plot the data, then we have this bell shape. This symmetric data is actually known as normal data. So this is the normal curve, right? This curve is known as normal curve. Let us discuss the characteristics of the normal curve. Here, this curve is perfectly symmetric. Perfectly symmetrical means uh, uh, everything on the left side would be the image, uh, uh, mirror image of everything that is on the right side. So this is a perfectly symmetrical curve or this is known as bell-shaped curve. So this is the frequency curve or the histogram type of shape. Right? So, if this resembles um, the um, bell shape curve or uh, the histogram gives us the impression of a bell shape figure, then that is termed as a normal curve. So, if we have a normal curve, then mean and median are approximately equal. If we consider the coefficient of skewness, since this is symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, so this is approximately zero. And if we consider the coefficient of cortosis, so coefficient of cortosis is again uh, perfectly fit, means the default value is around three. So it means uh, they are normal in nature. Means if we consider the value skewness, so anything beyond means much higher than zero, means higher on the positive side or higher on the lower side, will show that our data is not normal in nature. In the same manner, if uh, if we consider the value of cortosis, then values which are uh, higher than three or lower than three will present the picture that our data is not normal. So this is the primary concept of the um, uh, normality of the data. Uh, now we will uh, take up the slide to discuss in a uh, detailed manner. So why normality is very important? Because some statistical tests become invalid. So if our data is normal in nature, then only we can employ the parametric test, right? Otherwise we have to use non-parametric test if our data is not normal in nature. If data is not normal. Same uh, if we consider uh, the discriminant analysis, so, so the, the property for the discriminant analysis or the assumption for the discriminant analysis is that, that our data or variable follow normal distribution. So this normality discussion is, that's why so important. So how we check whether our data is normal or, or not. So if we don't have much of the difference means insignificant difference between mean and median, then we can say our data is normal. We have also discussed the two shape parameters. One is related to symmetricity and other is related to uh, flatness, that is cortosis. So if we consider the absolute value, so the absolute value for the normal distribution for the coefficient of squareness is approximately zero. The absolute value for the cortosis for the normal distribution is around three. But if we consider the standardized value, standardized value again, we have skewness minus its mean divided by its standard deviation. So in that manner, we have standardized. So if uh, in this manner, they have been standardized. And if standardized values lies in between minus 1.96 to um, plus 1.96, they should be treated as normal. 
in the same manner if we consider the standardized value of photo self again if the values lies in between minus 1.96 to plus 1.96 they should be treated as normal and beyond 1.96 on the lower side and beyond 1.96 on the upper side they should be termed as non normal distribution and there are a number of visualization plots also we have discussed histogram and frequency curve here the curve should have a bell shape right this is the vertical bell shape curve in the same manner stem and leaf can also be used so for stem and leaf it should be horizontal bell shape curve so if we have a horizontal bell shape curve then the distribution can be taken as normal if our distribution is normal then we have symmetrical box and plot symmetrical box and plot means let us construct this if these two whiskers are uh, equal in length or equal in shape with respect to each other means these two are same in the same manner these two boxes are a symmetrical or same then we can say that our distribution is normal so this is a box plot box plot is symmetrical equal boxes these two boxes are equal to one another and symmetrical or equal whiskers so this is the visualization plot we have one more plot that is known as uh, normality pp plots so normality pp plots is being made uh, uh, with the observed values they are the observed values on the x axis and on the y axis we have expected normal values means if the distribution is actually normal then what value would be there so we have observed value and we have uh, estimate uh, expected or estimated normal value if our distribution is indeed normal then obviously the values that are there in the sample means the observed value and the values which are expected from the normal would be same so if since both are same so we have a line on the 45 degree so this 45 degree line represent that the observed values which are the actual values and the expected normal values they are same so if values lies on this 45 degree line then it represent that our distribution is normal in nature and this is known as normal pp plots means normal probability plots so this is uh, the manner we can check whether our distribution is normal or not. and we have some well defined statistical test also that we will discuss later on so first of all we should consider uh, these outputs so these are the outputs now let us discuss both so in the first quarter uh, there is much of the difference between mean and median means uh, a normality is very doubtful in the same manner skewness and kurtosis are vastly different from 0 and 3 respectively so again normality is very doubtful but in the second quarter mean and median are are not much of the difference means normality may be assumed and these values skewness and kurtosis are also showing small values in the same manner if we consider as uh, suppose we are taking the first quarter so if we consider the figure for the first quarter then obviously histogram is badly affected but if we consider the stem and leaf then it is not exactly normal as you observe and moreover there is a widely separated out value and in the same manner it is the normal pp plot that we have discussed normal probability plot on the x axis we have observed value and on the y axis we have expected normal and this is the 45 degree line so these values are much deviated from this 45 degree line means they cannot be assumed to be normal and this is the value that is causing the problem that is the 610 the case number 55 value right. now let us consider uh, the second quarter also this is the normality plot for the second quarter so here are the normality plots here we have the 45 degree line and as you observe that most of the values are on this 45 degree line so we normality can also be assumed there is a one more graph that we have not taken up that is a d trended normal 
This is the graph between observed value and deviation from the normal. This is the zero, means above this we have positive deviation, below this we have negative deviation. If values are randomly placed with respect to this horizontal line, so that represents the normality of the data. But here values are not randomly placed, so we cannot assume our distribution to be the normal. But if we consider the second quarter, so here we have retended normal. Uh, on the x-axis, we have observed value. and the y-axis, we have deviation from the normal. This is the uh, horizontal line starting from zero. And these values are randomly placed with respect to these two lines. So normality may be there uh, to a good extent. In the same manner, as you observe, here this is the shape of the box and plot. So these two boxes should be same and these two whiskers should also be same. Here the lower whiskers is relatively smaller as compared to the uh, upper whiskers. So as you observe that uh, there are uh, uh, n number of uh, considerations that should be taken care of in order to decide whether our distribution is normal or not. Because not a, uh, there is no perfect tool uh, which is sufficient enough or which is comprehensive enough to consider uh, the concept of the uh, normality. So we have to consider a number of tools so to decide uh, about the normality of the data. So let us discuss the last tool. This tool is related to a statistical, te a statistical test where we perform two statistical tests to examine the normality. These two tests are kolmogorov sibrano test, better known as KS test, and the other one is shaparov wills test. And I, I will explain in the next session what do we mean by H0 and H1, but uh, let us discuss these two concepts. So here we have the null hypothesis as we assume our data distribution, it has been hypothesized as data distribution is normal in nature in both the cases. And we look for the p-values. P-values are there in the form of significance. If these p-values are low, low means they are less than 0 0.05, which is the value of alpha, then we reject H0. I will explain this concept in the next session in a detailed manner. So if p-values or significance is less than 0 0.05, then we reject H0. Reject H0 means our distribution is not normal. But if the p-values or the significance are high, high means they are greater than the level that is greater than 0 0.05. So we do not reject H0 or we accept H0 in the short form then we can say that our data is normal in nature. So here we have two tests, Mogoro and Simenano. Both have uh, their own merits and both have an own demerits. So that's that they have been mentioned in the notes also. So that's why we consider both the tests. And one interesting aspect is if we increase the sample size. So on increase the sample size, the, the departure from the impact of the departure from the normality reduces. So that's why it has always been recommended that we should have a large sample size. So if we have a large sample size, then the issue of normality is taken care of. In case if distribution is not following normal, we can perform appropriate transformation. Some appropriate transformation are, we can use square root transformation. We can use log transformation. Log transformation means on the base of 10, that is LG. We can also use LN transformation. LN transformation is based on the on E. So if we have the square root or the log transformation, then the, the deviation or the dispersedness of the value decreases and it may become approximately normal. So these are the remedial measures. So let me show you The results of these two tests also. Here we have two tests of normality. As you are observing, 
the first test being Kolmogoro Simreno. This is the Kolmogoro Simreno test. The second one is Shaparo virus. If we consider uh, the results of these tests for the first quarter. So here the p value or the significance for, uh, for the Kolmogoro Simreno is 0 0.000, means it is a very low value. This 0 0.000 is less than 0 0.05. So H0 would be rejected. Even in Shaparovils, this value is 0 0.000. This is less than 0 0.05. So in both the cases, we reject H0. Where H0 is, our data distribution is normal. We are rejecting this hypothesis. So we can say that first quarter is not following normal distribution. And if we consider the second quarter, the p-value is 0 0.200. That is 20%. 0 0.200 is more than 0 0.05. This is a big value. Since it is more than 0 0.05, that is more than 5%. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So we have to accept that. So we can say that distribution is following normal distribution as per the Kolmogorov Simranov test. Even if we use Shaparov Wills test, then again this value 0.489. This 0.489 is 48.9%, which is uh, above 5% or more than 50. 0 0.05. So again, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So since we cannot reject the null hypothesis, so we can say that for the second quarter, data is following normal distribution. So what is the thing? That for the first quarter, we can say that our data is not following normal distribution. And the second quarter, we can say that our data is following normal distribution. But actually, what is happening? All these results are badly affected because of this 16 value, that is 610. Right? So if we modify this value, or if we eliminate this value, and we rerun the analysis, then these results would be vastly different than the results we have discussed. Suppose uh, the software has indicated that there is a problem in the first quarter sale with respect to outlet number 55. So we recheck the data with the respect to the case number 55, and we observe that it is our mistake that the actual value is 61, but wrongly we have entered the value as um, 610, right? So uh, either we should eliminate or delete this value or replace this value by the appropriate value that is 61. So we replace it by the appropriate value that is 61 and uh, if we repeat this analysis using this value, then all the measures that we have discussed would be vastly different, including the normality concept also. This is, uh, so this is uh, for you to rerun the analysis using this uh, value that is 61. So this is all about today and uh, we are stopping the session.